Hey, I have a client who listeners, did you know I have a growing library of NCB approved one hour online self-paced continuing education courses that you can do anytime, anywhere? Well, now you know. Current classes include what's next COVID-19 updates for massage therapists and a massage therapist introduction to pharmacology part one and brand new a massage therapist introduction to pharmacology part two. Classes are $20 each and they confer one hour of continuing education credit. Want to know more? Visit my website at ruthwerner.com and check it out. Be sure to sign up for my mailing list so you'll never miss a new class. Anatomy Trains is thrilled to announce our first ever Women's Health Symposium. This live online event takes place February 26 and 27, 2022, AWST, that's Australian Western Standard Time. Register by January 21st to receive a significant early bird discount and over $400 worth of bonuses. We have invited a powerful lineup of all female authors, physicians, therapists, and clinicians to share their passion and life's work. Visit anatomytrains.com for details. Hi, and welcome to I Have a Client Who? Pathology Conversations with Ruth Werner the podcast where I will discuss your real-life stories about clients with conditions that are perplexing or confusing. I'm Ruth Werner, author of A Massage Therapist's Guide to Pathology, and I have spent decades studying, writing about, and teaching about where massage therapy intersects with diseases and conditions that might limit our clients' health. We almost always have something good to offer, even with our most challenged clients, but we need to figure out a way to do that safely, effectively, and within our scope of practice. And sometimes, as we have all learned, that is harder than it looks. This week's episode comes from a massage therapist whose client has an uncomfortable kidney situation, and it goes like this. Hi, Ruth. I have a client diagnosed with nutcracker syndrome. She only became symptomatic this past year. She's not eligible for surgical intervention, so she helps massage treatments can help manage her symptoms. I treated her with fairly gentle cross fiber and compressions, etc., avoiding the left kidney area. I also avoided circulation boosting approaches, but of course, blood clots have to be a consideration. I'm not sure how to evaluate contraindications for body work. She did find relief in the work, but what are the risks of continuing? Thanks for your time. Hmm. All right. I've never heard of nutcracker syndrome, but clearly we hear it has something to do with kidneys. Usually massage has a very tentative relationship with kidney issues because of the crossover between kidney function and cardiovascular disease, which is pretty complicated. But as you heard, this massage therapist made some specific adjustments in the massage and the client seemed to get some relief. Is this really a good idea? Well, at the beginning of this project, as I set out to understand Nutcracker Syndrome, I'm frankly not sure. So I did a little digging, and here's what I found out. Renal Nutcracker Syndrome is a condition where the left renal vein is compressed. And this can happen when it gets squeezed between the aorta and another abdominal blood vessel, maybe a mesenteric artery. Or it can happen when the renal artery is caught between the aorta and the spine. In some people, the blood vessels in this area are just unusual and they grow in a way that smashes the left renal vein, just like a, oh yeah, a nutcracker. This causes blood to back up into the kidney, which can be painful. And it can damage the delicate tissues and filters that help us to extract excess water and waste from the blood for excretion as urine. One of the consequences with these damaged filters is that we find stuff in the urine like blood and proteins that don't belong there. Scientists who are super fussy call this nutcracker phenomenon when it appears in imaging tests but doesn't cause symptoms, 
and nutcracker syndrome when it results in clinical symptoms, because sometimes the scenario is very mild and it's only found incidentally. Huh, I hear you wondering, what would cause this? And why just the left side? And can people have bilateral nutcracker syndrome? And is this some weird genetic anomaly? Well, the answers to these questions is... Why on the left side? Because the abdominal cavity is not symmetrical, and things are shaped differently between the left and right sides. The right renal vein can be compressed as well, but that's much rarer than the left renal vein compression. And the right side is most likely to be compressed in late-stage pregnancy. Bilateral nutcracker syndrome does not appear anywhere I could find in the literature, so if it happens at all, I'm prepared to say it must be extremely rare. And no, this is not a genetic anomaly. This is some bad luck in the shape of abdominal organs and blood vessels. Nutcracker syndrome is most commonly diagnosed in women in their 20s and 30s, but it can affect anyone of any age. There's a lot of contradictory information about how common it is. Some sources say it's really rare, and others say it's really common, and still others say, well, we don't have a clear diagnostic criteria to delineate between nutcracker phenomenon and nutcracker syndrome, so we really have no idea how many people may have it. There is widespread agreement that nutcracker syndrome should be considered when a person has unexplained blood in the urine, and that is a fairly common situation. Nutcracker syndrome comes about because of some changes in the size and the relative locations of abdominal organs. The identified causes of nutcracker syndrome include these things. Growing tumors may push on some organ locations, and this happens especially with tumors of the pancreas, of the peritoneum, or that affect the abdominal lymph nodes. A severe lordotic curve swayback could change the layout of the abdominal organs to cause this kind of compression. There's a condition called nephrotosis. Tosis means to fall, that's spelled P T O S I S. In nephrotosis, the kidneys drop low into the pelvis when a person stands up. And when this happens on the left side, you got nutcracker syndrome. Abdominal aneurysm can put pressure on the left renal vein. Rapid changes in a person's height and weight can affect the relationship of internal organs to cause nutcracker syndrome. We sometimes see this during adolescent growth spurts, especially when the vertebral bodies suddenly get much larger over a short period of time. Being underweight is a factor, too, because the protective fat around the kidneys may be diminished. And as we mentioned earlier, pregnancy can force a change in the relationship of the kidneys to their veins and the vena cava. And kidneys do not tolerate back pressure at all. Ask anyone who's had a kidney stone about that. The signs and symptoms of nutcracker syndrome, when it's severe enough to cause any, Include blood in the urine, protein in the urine, abdominal pain, especially on the left side, back pain, pelvic pain, pain during intercourse, the technical term for this is dyspareunia, and, and I don't quite understand this one, lightheadedness while standing but not sitting. Also, headaches, bloating, pelvic congestion, and leg swelling. And men may develop left-sided varicocele, that's a varicose vein, at the left testicle. Okay, so now we have a situation where the left renal vein is compressed by something in the abdomen that could be related to a handful of things like tumors or pregnancy or changes in size. Well, that compression seems pretty fixable, right? We just need to get pressure off that renal vein. And especially when it happens in kids, it's usually temporary and doesn't require treatment. When they grow a bit more, that pressure is usually relieved. But when it is persistent and making serious symptoms, it's usually treated by inserting a stent into the renal vein. This can be done as closed surgery using the femoral vein to carry the device into the vena cava and then to the left renal vein. It is still a risky procedure. It hasn't been used for a long time, so we don't know a lot about this kind of surgical permanence, and things can go wrong. 
But so far, most people have had good results with no complications related to their stent. But if a stent isn't a good choice, then a variety of surgeries to reconstruct or bypass the renal vein might be used. This can be done laparoscopically or through open or robotic surgery. But any of these interventions, stents or vascular surgery, have a long, slow recovery period. The prognosis is generally good. Without treatment, though, nutcracker syndrome could contribute to kidney damage and possible left renal vein thrombosis, which could then lead to pulmonary embolism, of course. Just to be thorough, to make sure I wasn't missing anything, I did a PubMed.gov search for nutcracker syndrome and massage, and I got the dreaded message, your search was processed without automatic term mapping because it retrieved zero results. Well, okay, I didn't really expect anything, but sometimes you get a surprise, so it's always worth a look. To return to our client, here's what our contributor sent. She's not eligible for surgical intervention, so she hopes massage treatment can help manage her symptoms. I treated her with fairly gentle cross fiber and compressions, etc., avoiding left kidney area. I also avoided circulation boosting approaches, but of course, blood clots have to be a consideration. I'm not sure how to evaluate contraindications for body work. She did find relief in the work, but what are the risks of continuing? I love this massage therapist's cautiousness and their willingness to work conservatively without trying to boost circulation. I'll come back to that in a moment. But really, all they wanted to do was offer some relief to this client and to do it safely. And I still have some questions. I invite you to ponder this for a moment to see what kinds of questions you would like to ask this client. So here's my short list. That would be in addition to the all important, what would you like to do with your massage today? Number one, tell me what symptoms you're having that you think massage can help with. Two, tell me why you're not a good candidate for surgery. Three, do you have any other complications related to your nutcracker syndrome? Four, what are your goals for your medical care? Five, what medications are you using for this and what side effects do they cause? And six, tell me about your general levels of exercise and your activities of daily living. Does your doctor want for you to exercise? Our contributor brings up that, quote, blood clots have to be a consideration, unquote. Okay, but in the context of nutcracker syndrome, the risk of blood clots is really just about the renal vein, not somewhere that we are likely to disrupt. If the client is using meds to lower this risk, that has some repercussions about pressure, right? But a whole body increase in blood clot risk is probably not something that turns up as a problem for people with nutcracker syndrome. Still, I'm really glad it's on this massage therapist's mind. Medical treatment for nutcracker syndrome may involve using angiotensin inhibitors. Those are ACE inhibitors. People who have the stent surgery will probably also use anticoagulants of various strengths. Both of these pharmacologic strategies have implications for massage. ACE inhibitors can make people feel logy and dizzy. They might need more time to transition back to full speed after their session. And anticoagulants, of course, are associated with a much higher than normal risk of bruising. So as this massage therapist evaluates for risks, they need to get a clear idea of the client's medication use and general physical health and resilience. The data on whether massage really boosts circulation isn't strong, but I appreciate the therapist's desire to be conservative here because I bet that most people, even those of us who have healthy kidneys, need to pee after a good massage. And for someone with a problematic kidney, well, we don't need to add to that load any more than necessary. The massage therapist writes about avoiding the left kidney area, again, I'm not convinced that's necessary unless the client is having pain there. And even then, I would think that firm, confident, longitudinal stroking on the left side of the spine and trunk is likely to be safe and very welcome. However, maybe let's skip the heavy duty to Potman here, right? So to recap, this client's capacity to receive massage depends on her overall illness versus her wellness 
her medications and side effects, her ability to exercise safely, and what she wants to achieve. These variables will give us a reasonably clear idea of how intense or demanding our work can be. And as long as we stay within those safety parameters and we document how we came to those decisions, then we have done all our due diligence we can to be safe and effective and to deliver an excellent standard of care. Thanks, contributor, for sending this in and giving me the chance to learn about a new topic left renal venous compression, or nutcracker syndrome. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to I Have a Client Who Pathology Conversations with Ruth Warner. Remember, you can send me your I Have a Client Who stories to I Have a Client Who at abmp.com. That's I Have a Client Who, all one word, all lowercase, at abmp.com. I can't wait to see what you send me, and I'll see you next time.